Sector. Okay, let's look at priority. I, I know you are within the railway sector, yeah. but let's, let's go a bit outside that sector. Yes. And so we can come back and put the conversation in proper yeah. perspective. So we're looking at priorities. Yeah. And of course, we admit that having a railway yes. uh, could be beneficial. We've yes. seen it uh, benefit other countries. Yes. But here as a country, we have challenges, <laughs> uh, beginning with education. Yes. This government says, it has introduced uh, free senior high school education. Yes. Uh, recently, there have been deaths mm -hmm. in some of the senior high schools mm -hmm. due to what the medical experts tell us is meningitis. Yes. Uh, that's a challenge we have to deal with, immediate challenge. Yes. We have a challenge with um, a, 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 a great sector mm -hmm. where army worms recently attacked farmers. The farmers are, are calling for compensation and all that. Okay, so. You look at these problems, mm -hmm. and I can continue to give you an yes. endless list of problems. Yes. And then we have railway coming somewhere in there, yes. demanding about $21.5 billion yes. to develop. Yes. $21.5 billion can immediately take care of pre-senior high school education. Mm -hmm. It can immediately resolve or solve the problems of the farmers whose farms were destroyed by the army worms, and so on and so forth. Why should we, at this point in time, consider railway development as an important matter, considering our very huge challenges? That's a very good question, and uh, I like that. You see, for, uh, for the country to transform, we are looking at transformation of a country. Railway plays a significant role in that. Now, all the things that you've mentioned, if we have proper railway systems here, the benefits that generates back into the country can give us good hospitals. The schools will benefit. The, uh, the agri sector will benefit. Because you can imagine transporting all your cocoa through, through the rail. You know, it makes the country vibrant. It brings in more, and the 21.5 billion that you've just quoted, the sector can look for investors to come and invest into that and give us a system, a good system, which we need to train our own people. It creates jobs. Do we even know how these guys got the meningitis? Maybe at home, parents don't even have good, they are not um, wealthy enough to take their children to good, good, good hospitals. Railway can, can, can bridge that gap because job creations, businesses are going to grow. Everybody is going to be happy. As I'm, as I'm, as, look, man, I'll give you an example. Manchester. Manchester used to be, because it's part of the north, and in, uh, you've lived in England before, mm. people in the south will say, oh, the, nor the northerners, the northerners. You see, there's that kind of uh, 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 um, gap between the northerners and also the southerners. So even if you work in London, you get London allowance. You don't get that in, in Manchester. These were like the five areas. Now Manchester is transformed to a point that all the big consultancies are moving to Manchester. BBC is moving to Manchester. Cost of living is low. Uh, and, and also, the, 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 that city itself is transformed. Through that, good hospitals can be built. Agriculture will be improved. So everything that you mentioned, I think we, ha we, we have to put it in perspective. Yeah, these so, so, these sorry, yeah, Mr. Ademo, yeah. but um, mm -hmm. if you're telling us yeah. that through railways we can have good hospitals, yeah. jobs, and so on, yeah. and I am saying we yeah. used to have yeah. a vibrant railway yeah. sector. Yeah. Why didn't it create the jobs that were sustainable enough for that sector to develop itself? Why didn't it contribute to the construction of the hospitals? Yeah. Why did it not succeed in, as it were, maintaining itself yes. to the extent that it had to go down. It means there's something fundamentally wrong, yes. which we haven't identified yet. Yes. So those are the lessons we have to learn. And I think that those are the lessons that this government has learned, and hence why they are bringing expertise in. Because one, we have to train on our, our own people. The, the most important thing is Ghanaians would have to become railway experts. And they don't have to go to UK, Spain, or China to gain that expertise. They would have to gain that expertise in Ghana. So we need to bring the railway into Ghana, train our people for the next 100 or 200 years. 
-hmm. because we, we, they have to be competent. If you haven't got competent railway experts or engineers, how do we maintain our system? We get, okay, we bring the Germans, we bring the, 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 the French, the Spanish, to come and build our railway system for us. Are we training our people so that when these guys leave, who is going to maintain the system? But maintenance is, is a key part of growing the railway industry. And we need to bring, we need to bring these, exp we, we need to complement, bring the foreigners, but at the same time, we have to develop our people to become expertise. And I want to use this opportunity to say to Ghanaians, in my team, we've got ladies. Ladies are developing. They are running projects. They are delivering projects in the UK. Ghanaians. So I want to say, and I want to say to Ghanaians that we want Ghanaians to become railway experts. We are here to support the ministry to put those structures in place where we can train our own people to become expertise in s railway signaling, railway systems, which is signaling and telecoms, mm. m &E, electrification and plants. We want people to understand this. And I believe the ministry is already putting measures in place where universities will start teaching railway, mm. accredited. And yeah. are we also looking at the response that uh, the general public will give to this massive development of the real sector. I'm saying this because as a media person, yeah. we've covered enough stories where, for instance, in the northern region, yeah. um, they were used to taxis, using yes. taxis as a major means of transport, yeah. public transport. Yes. And then these um, tricycles yes. came into the system, yeah. and the taxi drivers to date are on a daily basis having clashes yes. with the new form of transportation which has been introduced into Tamale. It's yeah. steeper yes. and people have, um, you know, digressed. Now they don't patronize the taxis any longer. Yeah. And so the taxi drivers feel that they have lost their jobs mm -hmm. due to the activities of such persons. We've seen many such examples. Sometimes you go to an area where they, they were basically tro -tro yes. operating there. Yes. As soon as a taxi comes in there, they have a fight with that taxi. Mm -hmm. So if you have a culture, such a culture, yeah. and say, let's introduce a system yeah. that uh, will make transportation more effective. Yes. To what extent can we engage, say, the truck truck drivers yes. and the other public, private uh, drivers, like the GPR, yes. so that they don't feel yeah. that an expansion mm -hmm. of the real system will mean a decline in their businesses? It, it, the expansion of the railway doesn't decline businesses. It grows businesses. Really? Yes. If you go to Spain, they still run taxis. Germany still run taxis. I use taxis when I go to Spain. But that's very expensive. It's, yeah, and so yeah. a few people will, will now patronize taxis. No, it's not, taxis in London are more expensive than, than anything else. It's not that, that expensive. It, it still grows businesses. They are not going to lose their jobs. They will still keep their jobs. Businesses are going to grow. Look, London, they've got this um, cycling, uh, the initiative for cycling, mm. where you've got cycle racks. You can go and pay one pound and still cycle. But they've got the, one of the best railway systems in the world. But why are they having initiatives for people to, to cycle? So you can just go put your one pound in, get your, your cycle, and you cycle. And we've still got railway. So we, we, we shouldn't limit ourselves. I think we have to be ambitious and support the government. The government is, has put a good initiative and a good master plan, a vision for us. Let's not allow these petty things to derail this whole program. Now, you will call it petty yeah. because of where you stand in yeah. this. But the torture driver yeah. will not see it as petty. He sees right. it as something that will affect his livelihood. Yeah. In such situations, what tangible explanations yeah. can you, as the expert, yeah. give to the local torture driver mm -hmm. for him to understand yeah. that the introduction yeah. of a railway, an effective railway system, yeah. will not amount to a reduction in his income, yeah. but that it will end up increasing the opportunities for him to have more customers and so on. Yeah, I want to ask the truck truck driver, how long does it take them to take passengers from Kaswa to Accra? Maybe one and a half hours? <laughs> yes. Yeah? Now, this is what we call congestion relief. 
in UK they call it congestion relief. So with a good railway system, it eases congestion on the railroad, so or on the roads. So if a truck or driver can run in two hours, he will have to run from Kaswa to Accra. How many trips can he make in a day, and how much is he going to earn? But if you got the railway, that is going to ease the congestion. People don't have to drive to work. People can just drive to the railway station, park their cars, as we do in the UK, and take the railway. It relieves the congestion on the road. So they can do more trips. It's rather going to improve their business. So what I'm saying is that we need to think, and hence why when I started, I said, we have to look at this thing in a holistic way. And we shouldn't allow these sort of things to come in the way to derail this whole program because it is, the, it is a fantastic program. The country is going to grow. The economy is going to grow. Businesses are going to grow. Cities are going to grow. Businesses will be moving into cities that we never even had an idea that businesses will move into those cities. Why? Because they can move around. It's all about movement. So if the truck truck driver is going to sit from Kaswa to Accra, spend three hours just on a single trip, so how many trips is he going to do in a day? Mm. Congestion relief. That's what we call it.